moment, I've got some more to do after this, but I felt it had changed and so I'm going to put together a seascape, a beach scene, uh, with a nice rough rolling surf coming in. And uh, I want to work right from the foreground to, to the distance here. The, the, the sky is one of my own, taken from uh, a photograph out in New Zealand, in fact, this particular one. Um, and the beach is made of composite parts of uh, various photographs that I fitted together to make up a fantasy beach, if you like. And I haven't quite finished with ideas on that yet. Um, so I'm going to make a drawing first, see how the composition comes out. And then I'll work up this one, uh, mainly with brushes, I think, this time. Right, I think I've prepared my drawing enough now. It's a matter of uh, <clears throat> just working up very loosely when my basic shapes are all going. I'm going to start with a star and work my way down. So uh, I'm going to use a big brush for that. Let's go through the materials I'm going to actually use. I'm going to start with the larger brush, but I have my filberts and flats over here as well. I'll show you the uh, methods that I use. Now at this stage I haven't yet worked out whether I'm going to use painting knives or not, but there's my basic palette of colours. I'm mixing tray, water, my large brush to start off with. I can usually get away with these two painting knives. And see the difference between painting knives and palette knives is that a painting knife is set with an angle at the, uh, at the blade there so that one's fingers don't touch the canvas underneath. Palette knife comes straight off. Then in my set I've got my series of flat brushes and the um, filbert brushes as well. And of course some small rounds too if I need them. I've even got uh, textural brushes such as uh, the rakes there as well if I need them. Sponges if I need some sponge textures which I may do. So we've got a lot of colour hues in this. We've got these warmer blues up here and blue greys coming down to the more cerulean and turquoises down the bottom here right through into the creams and yellows and then these lovely different colour hue blues and greens coming through the sea as well especially in the transparency of the waves. So I'm going to build up from my mid-tones outwards to my lighter ones, the same here, work on my mid-tones mainly and then work out to my darks and then through to the lighter at the end. So let's make a start on this sky. I'm going to start off with I think a nice cerulean blue to use fairly thick paint on this. Um, it's, this is all heavy bodies but at the same time, um, I'm going to start off with what we call the lean, the thinner paint. And uh, work my fat over it, possibly with even a knife later. So let's get nice big brush strokes working in here to start with, very delicately. I want to bring that colour down and through into this one to blend it in afterwards. So this is cerulean. I'm going to come down to a turquoise after that. It's a bit thinner there, I can always bring. I can just see my drawing underneath this at the moment anyway, so I don't mind if I... Uh, oh, it's a little bit thinner at the moment, so I can find my clouds. And that's Sarah Lee, and that's going to look very dark at first, because, because I'm coming down um, against white canvas. And it'll look a lot lighter if once I get all the colours on. And I'm going to gradually go into a more of a turquoise then. Again, I said I want nice thick chunks of paint, that's big brush strokes here. And I'm going to crisscross those to get the, the pattern smoothed out a bit. We'll come down to more, more turquoise as I come down. It looks very dark, but it won't be as dark once it's all achieved. So I'm a little bit greener now as I come into the turquoise. You can see how we're getting a nice, nice light effect of this. And I want to come then with this light turquoise all the way down here, right through into here. It gets a little bit darker over this side. I'm blending it in all the time here, just crisscrossing these strokes to get my blending. Now I want to go to a slightly lighter blue to play against the blue sky. Because being a sunset, we're going to get the opposites happening in this. You see that green? I can bring it into this now and just blend it, feather it in. And this green will work very nicely against the warm pinks and reds we're going to have later. So that I don't make a brush mark. 
I have a much lighter blue coming down here. But you can see this gentle graduation of colour I've got from the different hues of the blues and the turquoises and greens just coming up into here before I start putting clouds in. So I can let this first coat dry off quite a bit now. Turquoise coming down with a touch of lemon yellow into it down here. So I've got to try and find now something a bit different to do a, a landscape again. This time again I'm using photographs but I've enhanced the photograph already to help um, find my colours and push one colour against another, which you know I like to do, although I'm not going to make a very impressionist piece this time, it's more figurative. I think you might enjoy, you can see the way I'm getting these lovely delicate colours. Take some white and some light blue there, which is more cobalt almost. It's, uh, just here. It's a cooler, much cooler blue just here. I think put a bit more yellow into that, just a touch of lemon yellow into that same mix. As we come down here and the whole thing becomes I'm going to use some lighter creams over this later. I just want to get this base, this, um, get rid of this white canvas down to the horizon. And the horizon is our sea level here. There. Pushing the paint into the canvas at the moment to, to fill the folds of the canvas before I start to blend in more pinks and yellows into this. And I want to go down to my deeper colours now and then gradually come back. Very subtle shades, just blending in while the paint is still just quite enough to, to take it. Before I put a new lighter colours on, now I want to stop bringing in this the darker blue grey, which I'm going to use a little bit of ultramarine. Oh, smallest touch of purple for that. Here, just about here. Work gradually into it, darker and darker. Just feel these lovely. I can always come back with some lighter colours and put those into the cloud, into the sky a bit later on. Now I can do this by blending these colours together, but I can also do it by using very thin glazes and and blending them softly with my fingers later as well. So this is just a start. I'm going to take some Prussian and let's see what that does when we come into here. It's a bit, little bit warmer. You can just start to see now as I put the darker colours on uh, that colour behind, which seemed too dark earlier on, now is beginning to make a bit more sense. Which means that when I do the very light waves down here, they're going to really shine out. That's the thing with acrylics, we can work lights over darks and darks over light. Whenever we want. I can come back into this and put lights back over it if I want to in a minute. Base coats, that'll do for now. I'll just work into those a fraction. I'll work lights and darks backwards and forwards. I've plenty of time on this, I just want to keep myself occupied at the moment and enjoy something a bit different. I'm going to take a thinner coat of that and just come into this down here. It's too, too wet really. As you can see, I'm not able to. A glaze just to, as an underbody before I start working colours over it. Now I can at least see my tones a bit better 
what's going on here before I start working comes back in and building up a bit more. Okay, this morning I'm going to start off not carrying on with the sky. I just want to get some base coats onto here, and I'm going to use a sponge roller for that. One inch sponge roller, one and a quarter inch sponge roller, and uh, I don't want, I want to be able to see my drawing underneath, so I'm going to paint the, uh, paint fairly thinly. Now to use a sponge roller, I uh, want to mix, mix some paint here that's, in this case, fairly thin, so a bit of water, and I'm going to want a, a um, a mauve to brown background here, a little bit of blue in it. It wants to be fairly thin as I say. There we go, that should do it. And a little touch of white. I don't want too much white because white is a, a body colour. It will make the paint um, opaque and I want a semi-transparent feel to this. So let's see if I can get some base textures to my wet sand going on down here. You notice then that I put the paint, the roller, through the brush to bring all the paint out of the brush and get the paint on the roller nice and even. And all I want to do, as I say, is get base coats onto here. Um, like that I can paint over with the brushes later. So, a nice, even coating. But I will um, adjust the... It's a lovely texturing I'm getting here already. I will adjust the... Uh, colours slightly to get a variegated colouring on, on here. Uh, fairly thin coat at the moment just to get things started up. And so we're getting a sort of slightly sandy texture there. A bit more blue into it. Get a little bit more uh, cobalt in this case. Plenty of water. And again I'm going to put my roller through the brush. We're going into a slightly bluer tone. This is a lovely effect for the, the water shining on the sand, the wet sand. Get all this white canvas covered that I can see what I'm doing better. It will really give us an effect of light, and that's again what I'm after at the moment is just to feel my way into this painting. A little bit browner, a little bit of uh, a lizard into it here now. You can, you, can, you can vary this and adjust it when you like, you see. You go into it over the other already, it's not with the feeling of these rocks. Go back into my blues, take a little bit of um, cobalt again, go back into that. A little bit of uh, ultramarine this time. So I get these dark, darker backgrounds. So we can use a sponge roller for uh, landscapes as well as. Pan seeds as I've been showing you. And then if they're a little bit lighter, they can get a bit of pink into it now actually. Plenty of water because I don't know if it's still fairly transparent. I'll get my canvas completely covered. I don't see any bite of the canvas at all. I'm putting an undercoat on like this. Fill up the pores of the canvas to get it stained. And I'm going to put some coats over this shortly, the variations of the blues and so on, to really pick up on this lovely background colour. So, you know, some of you seem to think this because I've been using the sponge roller on the cafe scenes that that's all they're good for, but you can see actually they can be very useful in other areas as well. I have done this on one or two of the New Zealand beat scenes that I've done in the past where I've used this same technique to get the effects on the sand, which is very, very useful for the spectrum. So, right, I'm going to just wash that roller because I'm going to go back to a, a, a more turquoisey blue now for the rest of the underpainting there. Now, I want to mix up a, a mid blue, so between the warm and the cool. Um, I think I'll have some cerulean and a, a little touch of the emerald green in there. First of all, and I've got quite a wet roller, so I've had to dry the roller out having um, blue green just to start off with. So I'll roll the roller through the brush each time. And now let's look where we're going to have some of that blue coming through. 
green brood is starting for just to give me the same base coat at the moment. That. That's the thing, if you've got water on that roll, even though I've dried it, there's still water coming out of it, it tends to be a bit... I've got the feeling of the wet beach already. There, now. Now I can go back to my brushes. Just let that dry off a bit, and while that's drying, I'm going to go back onto the sky. I think it's time to set out a new set of brushes now. I'm going to put some new thorbits out. I've just been using flats for the moment. Um, I'll replace the flats soon too. They've done most of my winter's work. They last quite well, these particular brushes. Long-handled uh, nylon ones, which these days the quality is, is very good. And uh, they're in between being like a bristle and uh, a soft watercolour brush. Bristle is too stiff for the acrylics on jobs like this and the watercolour brush clogs up. So these, these nylon ones, these in-between ones, are, are ideal. Here we are then, a nice new set of brushes set out, the flats and the filberts. We'll carry on. I'll start working into the sky. I did to go back, I was using a big brush for the sky earlier on. I could come down a, a size now um, and work one of my big flats here. See if that's a, uh, this is an older brush, I hope it will be alright. Get some paint into it and we'll see. Um, this sky is still a bit transparent. You need to start working up some of these lighter blues. How bright is that one? The turquoise, yes, that's quite nice. You see me crisscrossing my marks as I was doing when I first put the paint on. Get these effects of light. Look at the water on it now. I'll use it a bit thinner, almost as a glaze, and just soften it up into these clouds. It just links in. Just gently feathering in. You know, this, this way of using the paint on the end of the brush for really light, like this is called feathering. Pick up on using this technique with the brush. A bit more water with it to make it slightly transparent and just blend these colours in a little bit more. of building up, you can see I'm doing here bit by bit, getting fatter and fatter with my paint as well. If it was fat and lean, it was the thin coats underneath, and then you're building up this, these lovely heavier brush marks on top gradually. I have to go a little bit darker in places too. I need to come back to my Prussian and a little bit of green maybe. So Prussian and a, and a dry piece of Palette, brush in, yes. Just how much darker we can go then. And that pressure comes up to here. I don't want to go too dark, so I want to keep this light against the rocks in the foreground here, yet. Yeah, this glow. I'll bring those lights back in a moment, this is going to really shoot out, so I'll get better, stronger effects then. Turn it to a half inch now. Let's start looking at these lovely light pinks and creams. I'll go to a medium. I'm going to take a um, uh, light cadmium at first. Put the white with that and see what we get. That should give me almost what I want. Let's start off here. A lovely line of light coming down below. So I have no rush on this painting. I'm not having to paint out of doors, so I can take my time here inside. Gradually just get it right. Tickling the brush on to get this mottled effect of the sky here. And then a bit of glazing again. We'll take the same colour and just soften it down into the sky. Garish if we made this too strong, so we've got to be quite subtle with our colours here. Let's 
still playing between these warm cool hues of each colour. Right, we looked a very light lemon yellow and white on, which is much, much cooler, and I think you'll see a huge difference when I do that in the, in the lighting here. You the difference in that and how much cooler it is. Makes a bit of warmth from the whole rest of the sky. And we will pick, be picking that up on the waves later on, so let's carry on down now to the sea. We'll have to work on the edges of a bit of land here, I, I suspect, first. Using sap green now to bring these walls forward just a bit. So now I'm going to work down my mid-tones, um, down around here, and down to the darks. And we can go back onto these waves, put the darks down here. Deep greens and deep blues and the lovely rocks and things that are happening. Right, let's carry on down now with the, the sea. And again I want to work from darks to light, so I'm going to work up my um, rocks at the moment. Let's start to find some really lovely pure colours here. Catching, as I say, just, just linting this sun coming from here. Greens again, and some slightly warmer greens up here, getting the sunlight. So I'm leaving my whites and blacks. I'm not going to use them at all to the very end if I even have to use them at all. And as I'm using a composite photograph, I mean, they're not going to be perfect joints. I've got to use what I've got here, just to use it um, to feel my rocks and uh, water and so on here. So it's not going to be painting exactly, I've got to move it as I go along in many ways.
and uh, we're well into this painting. Now I want to start pulling out the details of these waves. You can probably be referring to the, um, the lighter parts of the waves now on top before I come back into the strip more detail around the uh, froth and the foam and the texturing. And also I want to start pulling out these stones and foreground for more detail as well. So first of all, what I want to do is start looking at the light reflecting across these waves. And I'm going to use pure white. I'll save that to the very end. I might just put it a bit on. Yes, I'm going to use a very, very light cream and pinks at first. I'll start with the pink and then work my way across to the cream, which really will give us that sunlight. If I want to, then I can highlight the whites at the very, very end. I'm going to use a small filbert brush this time, so I want a little bit more of a point. Start with my white and add the colour to it. If you start with the colour, that uh, white to it and up the gallon. But I just want to start with the white, just tint it slightly. Just off. Add some yellow. I say mix some lemon. Okay. Start with that and see how that looks. I think it's going to make an immediate impression.
wrong when I put in the, the yellow ones. Oh, there we are then. Um, nice big uh, 
CC, not something you've seen me do before. I quite enjoyed that, kept me occupied for a few days. Next.